This is a bonus outtake from my interview with George Hurley of Minutemen and Firehose. You can hear George's entire full-length episode by subscribing to The Trap Set on iTunes, Stitcher, RSS, or by visiting our website, thetrapset.net. So what was the stuff that you were listening to and playing along with? Well, that the stuff I was listening to and playing along with, well, Rush had started coming onto the scene. Mm-hmm. But I was before that I was listening to uh, Robin Trower, BTO, uh, Foghat, a uh, uh, lot of Jimi Hendrix. I love Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. Uh, Did you relate to Mitch Mitchell in the same way you related? Oh, to I love Mitch Moon? Mitchell. Yeah. In fact, I was when when Jimi Hendrix played with uh, Buddy Miles. Uh-huh. God, I, I felt like it was it was betrayed, you know, because because Mitch was just the drummer for Jimmy. Right. You know, and then I didn't really care for the Bunny Miles and, and Jimmy thing. You know, it was it was more straight ahead rock thing. Mm-hmm. I just liked Mitch Mitchell better. I liked his playing better. Mm-hmm. I don't know, for some reason. But uh, I, uh, well, about the same time that punk rock came in, I also, like I said, I was getting into jazz music for some crazy reason. Uh and I started going to the Lighthouse in Hermosa Beach, which is a really old <clears throat> uh, jazz venue. And I, I saw some really amazing musicians there, Max Roach and all kinds of guys. You know, that and that just, made sense to you right away, what Max was well, doing? Well, I couldn't, I couldn't, I can't even play some of that stuff that those musicians played. I, they, I call right. them magicians because it was just amazing to me. And I'd get to sit like, you know, five, ten feet away from these guys. Yeah. Live performances. And there wouldn't even be any, hardly any people in there to see these guys. <clears throat> yeah, that here, was a weird time for jazz, late 70s. Yeah, it was. But you know what? I scooped up a lot of uh, used jazz records during that time, too. I have a, like a little jazz collection. And uh, Billy Cobham was definitely one of them, because I used to listen to Quadrant all the time. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, try to play that stuff. And he play, He had such a strong role, like, brrr, you know, it's yeah. really kind of, it really, he inspired me a lot. He really did. Yeah. Did you get a chance to talk to any of those guys? Um, just small talk, like, hey, that was great. I really yeah. loved it. And here I'm this young kid, so they probably, they probably, they, they, they said thank you and stuff. They were really nice. But I, I think maybe they were looking for an older, <laughs> older crowd just to come see them. Right. Because there really wasn't that much interest in these guys, you know? I mean, that's crazy. It is. It really is. One thing that started to happen around that time is jazz was moving out of that kind of scene and into this academic context yep. and becoming kind of more codified in a, in a strict way. You know, I could relate to a lot of that jazz stuff as kind of like punk rock. Yeah, absolutely. Some of that stuff was really crazy, too. It was out there. It was free form. It was really different. And maybe it was during a time where people just weren't open up to that free form thing, you know. When you say you're self-taught, are you completely self-taught? Or were there other kids in the neighborhood that would show you a thing or two or anything like that? Completely self-taught. Okay. All the way. I mean, I would watch other musicians. and You can't really learn a whole lot by watching them, but you can see what they're doing and you know, self-taught all the way. I mean, I feel yeah, like so. w- by watching someone like a Max Roach, I mean, obviously no one's ever going to play like Max Roach. I could just, never play like him at just all. Just like no one's ever going to walk across the room That's like Max That's one thing Roach. I had to come to terms with. I thought that maybe... Uh, nobody I, can ever play like you, though. Well, right? maybe so. Maybe so. Uh, I listen to like Mahavishu Orchestra and all that stuff. That's amazing timings and stuff that just blew me away. You know, I thought maybe... In the future, like 20 years from now, you do that. But no, no, I can't do that. <laughs> I don't think many people... <laughs> I can come close to it. Well, I can flop it. Most people can't way. do that, man. <laughs> you, know, it's like, you know, so I had to come to terms with that, that, hey, you know, I have to be who I am and what... It's best to just go out with what, what you are and trying to be somebody else mm-hmm. or something that someone's already done or whatever. I knew that's all I had.